left you on a little cliffhanger there, right? It's like YouTube. I'm just throwing the ads in. Um, okay, Gozer, if you're out there, here's how this works. Um, Instagram said, fuck off, and everybody come back. They cut you off after an hour. So we got to go through this whole process again of figuring out how to make your face and voice appear in unison upon uh, my iPad. So if you're out there, oh, there he is. Look, he's like a salty old professional now. Is he here? Connecting, connecting. Connected. There you are. Sorry about that, man. I didn't see that Instagram was uh, shutting us down, so. Bad Instagram. So we were, we, were, we were being asked, and we're already populating again here pretty quickly within uh, the room. We're almost back. Um, people were asking, why haven't you? Inquiring minds want to know why you haven't been to Germany or to America. Um, mainly because there was no offer to bring us over because uh, the problem, of course, is um, the costs to get over to the U.S. And um, without the help of uh, other bands that could yeah, book shows for us, so we mainly just come over and play just didn't happen well so, um, and for everyone out there listening blitz kid at one point we tried diligently to make it happen but as it so often is in america um and elsewhere the issue is um finance i mean you know it, it, it's all about music it's all about playing but in order to get to the navajo reservation from you know new england you know, the gas, the, the car ain't going to gas itself. So the issue is, is a lot of the promoters, a lot of the venues, um, at least on the tours that we were doing, we weren't able to cover the expenses of two bands. And we weren't about to be like, hey, Crimson Ghost, come over here and sleep in your cars. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because <laughs> um, that's what we're doing. And, you know, there's only so much car. And we'll give you the car, but, you know, we would rather you be in a hotel. So that's why it never happened. And then lo and behold, we were all set to go for this May and um, the, uh, the plague decided to come back. So, but that's why. Thank you, plague. Yeah. No, it was really like a, a dream coming true finally because of course we know we got our fans over there and we of course wanted to play for them and show them what a Crimson Ghost show feels and sounds like. And uh, we were pretty, yeah, pretty obsessed with uh, the thought, okay, this will be only the start and we will come back after that again and maybe just make a way into that U.S. market. But, yeah. I, it'll happen, man. I will exhaust my final breath to get you guys over here. And that is, that's, a wor that's my word. It's going to happen. Because everyone over here needs to experience that. Because you're saying you want people to experience the Crimson Ghost. It's just like some bands are great on albums and some bands are great live. Some bands are great on both. Um, like the only way I could describe you guys, like Nim Vind would describe as he says, like we're like a baseball bat hitting a wall. You guys are like if someone sandblasted you right in the face at point blank range uh, with just sonic... Uh, gravels. I mean, it was just like you guys. Thank are... you very much. <laughs> and you may guys... write. You will be the person who writes on next press kit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these guys are great. You're gonna love them. <laughs> see me, see me. Um, and I think I told you this once too. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't want to jump down into like gorgeous Frankenstein stories, but um, you know, Doyle, um, who I, from my experience, has been very picky about what he likes. Um, Dude, always, when I would play you guys, it was like, these guys are good. Like, he was a fan of you guys, you know? And I had to be like, because a lot of people would be like, what's up with the name? Like, Doyle would be like, Crimson Ghost, what's this? And I'm like, no, 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 it's a cover band. And then they turned into their own band. And now they're this band, but, you know, ah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, we were close to, to open up for, for a show for Doyle, but uh, they turned us down because they wanted to have some other metal style band, I guess. Yeah. It was. Yeah, maybe next time. Yeah, it happens. But uh, what are you drinking? Is that a Kolsch? Nope, it's a good Budweiser from Czech Republic. So, if, for people who don't know, 
and I, I don't want to assume people don't know, but for people who don't know, um, show them the label. This is, see, America has Budweiser, but it's like drinking skunk pits, and, uh, which comes from a non-drinker, but I, I taste, I taste. See, Budweiser, because yeah. actually there is a place in Czech Republic called Budweiser, or also, if I'm saying this correctly, Czeske Budjevice. Yeah, you're probably right about that. Nobody knows how to spell that. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, which what's the place that we used to play there um, in in Czech Republic in in uh, uh, microphone festival? No, no, no. I was talking about in um, oh no, when we would play um, the Velbloud, the mighty Velbloud. Yeah, yeah. Where was that? Um, this. Do you I think this this is uh, this Budvar town. Budvar, yeah, Budvar. I remember the first time we played there, it was on um, the f one of the first Hell Nights that we did. Actually, maybe it was the second one. Um, but we played there, and they were having a huge, uh, like, rivalry, like a football, um, like, throwdown, like, Braveheart style. Because like, there's a bridge right in front of um, the, the cl club that we would play. And then there was a bridge and a river and on the other side. So these two areas were separated. And I guess they were rival football um, teams. And... Um, there was like a huge conflagration that was like reported to go down that night. And we were all like outside, like looking like, has it started yet? Because <laughs> people take football very seriously over there. Oh, right? they do. They right. really do. As we, as we, as we say here, soccer, because we got to be assholes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Do you, I remember when we played in Darmstadt with you guys. Um, Golden the Golden Krone. Golden Krone. And, and they were like, Hey, this is Napoleon stayed here. And the room that we took one of our like band photos that people, I'll throw it up at some point where like, I'm doing this and Tracy's face is right there and stripes is in the background doing this. That was in the room that Napoleon stayed in man at that hotel. And we were like, <laughs> what? Um, but that was the night that Germany won one of the um, world cup games, right? Or like, did they win? This was 2006. Do you remember? Uh, if, if Mark would be here, you had to the right person, but I'm not interested in soccer or football or whatever it is. I just, so I'm not either. I really but don't know. I just remember that, like, we did not sleep a wink that night because literally people were driving, hanging out of their cars all night, waving flags. Going, yeah. yeah, this sounds like we won. <laughs> like six in the morning, man. People were literally outside. Just, it was chaos, man. Yeah. I was just like, wow. Like, we don't take soccer serious at all. No, uh, over here in, in, in Germany especially, it's it's really, uh, like, more religious than sport. Yeah, people are willing to die for it or beat the shit out of each other on a bridge. Oh, yeah. We get um, that way, too, at Little League games here, though. That's what we do when we have kids. When our kids are about 11 years old in America, we like to go to games and fight the parents. <laughs> Knock a fire out of that ball, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the thing is, uh, football or soccer over here is really like a multi-million dollar thing. It's not really only, yeah, for the sake of sports, but it's money, mostly. Hooligans in Shastri knocked over a dustbin. Who is this? Murder Dreams for Monster Kids. They know the joke. Whenever we were in Europe on the Michael Graves tour in the UK, let me specify, um... <laughs> We were talking about Bill Hicks skit, the comedian Bill Hicks. And he was talking about how like in England he got there like after the LA riots. And, you know, he arrived in, in England right after it happened. And everyone's like, Bill, like, oh my God, like that's crazy. Like, but we have our troubles too over here. And Bill Hicks was just like, and I'm not I'm not knocking the UK because believe me, like it's tough there. Um, but his joke was he's like, Come on, are you kidding me? He's like, I looked at the paper and it says Today, hooligans in Shaftesbury knocked over a dustbin. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're the hooligans. So anyway, I'll shut up now, man. I'm, I'm just confusing you. I apologize. <laughs> no worries about that. Yeah. So what are the, the words over there regarding that corona thing? Is anything open up in any time soon or is it like 2020 is gone? Dude, so here's the thing we're trying to open America back up and there's a lot of people divided on this uh, stance. And, you know, 
it's just like yin and yang. There's a point to every side. There's a little bit of, of reasoning in all of it. But the one thing that I hedge my bets on all the time is science. Not, you know, um, whims, not ideas. The problem with people wanting to open things up right now is this is a pandemic. Now, whether you want to say it's been escalated or blown out of proportion, it still is a disease. Um, yeah. This happens cyclically throughout history. Um, it's happened before. It'll happen again. We just happen to be in the middle of it. So we don't have that perspective of we're in a part of history that is repetitious. What history has shown is these things do not go away overnight. They don't just reset. You can't reset society overnight after something like this. Even if you can kind of get the virus under control, it's going to take time for everything that's like teetering on the verge of collapse to get back under firm ground. So I'm a little against personally um, opening up a lot of stuff. And I, and I know there are people out there like tattoo artists. I'm one of them, man. Um, salon workers, all these people who are, who are being affected. And I feel for you. I really do. It's just that when there's people out there, for example, like elderly, uh, immunocompromised people out there um, who are more susceptible to this, by opening these things up, and I don't mean salons, like those things have, they should be open, I think. Too. There's a way to make that work. But like beaches and state parks and all this stuff, man, you're just asking for a second wave of these things, man. And if history has ever shown anything, it's the second wave of these things that are generally the worst. Um, you know, so it's like, we can sit around for a couple of months and do nothing or, and, you know, it may turn into a year. I don't know. But all I know is I feel like not that we shouldn't go out and do things, but just be mindful that this could turn into a whole lot longer of an episode. Um, yep, it won't be. If you're not careful, it's really easy just to go, okay, the shock is worn off. Um, I'm still here. Um, I'm still alive. It's nice as fuck outside. I'm going for a walk. Do it. Go for a walk. But like at the same time, if you see somebody, man, give them space. Not because you, because of them. Like have the consideration that they may not want you around them. Because there are people out there, you don't know their story. You know, that may be what is best for them. So I'm more worried about going out and going somewhere. Not that I don't want to go out, but and getting somebody sick. Um, you know, you never know if you're asymptomatic. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I just believe in science. Yeah, so, true. Um, I just feel, there was a really funny Daily Show thing, man, that came out the other day. And it was just like, America, grand reopening. It's like, come on down to America. And it was like, America not responsible if everyone dies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just one of those things, man, where I don't, I just don't feel like people as a whole, and I'm not talking to everyone out there. I'm not talking to like hijinks or all these people specifically. Like I'm, I'm not commenting on your personal um, ability to self-govern or not. I'm not saying like individually, but generally as a rule, human beings, all of us um, tend to, for example, uh, we had a report in Florida, they opened the beaches and there was like 13, thousand tons or whatever of pounds of trash that was just left it's like come on man like you know it's like you haven't been outside in a long time and the yeah. first thing you do it's like the shopping cart theory do you know what the shopping cart theory is no nope. you know what shopping carts are you go to the okay. store and you shop with yeah, yeah you don't have to take the shopping cart back there's no law governing or requiring you to take the shopping cart back to the stall Okay, mm -hmm. shopping cart is the baseline to determine if an individual is capable of self-governing themselves. And what that means is most people, they don't take the shopping cart. They will only do it if they're forced or threatened. You know what I mean? And that behavior is what you're seeing now, that whole like, I'm going to do things the way I want to do it by my own standards. And then if there are consequences, when the government says, now you can't go to the beach, they go, oh, okay but they'll do everything to get to that point. Whereas all you gotta do, pick up your shit, put your card away, 
go home, go out, do stuff, but be respectful. That's all it is, man. Respect is the key to this, man. In my opinion, not trying to go off, testify over here, but that's just how I feel right now. Yeah, and the thing is, um, it, Sorry, brings, you it, bring, <laughs> it brings out the worst in people, in my opinion, because um, what most people just don't get is um, even if they are safe, other people might not be safe. So they are not playing with their own lives, but they're playing with the lives of other people. And this is what they don't realize. And this is the main problem. And everybody is like, Whoop. I saw uh, TV interviews with uh, people with in, in, the, in the range of maybe 15, 16, 17 years old, like kids. Yeah. And uh, they were asked, um, don't you know about the disease that's going on right now and that it kills people? Well, it doesn't kill me. That yeah. was the answer. And I think they should be hit so hard in the face. But, well, <laughs> that's people today. Just play an E chord in front of them at one of your shows. It'll be the same thing. <laughs> I'm like, ah, damn it. Again. <laughs> no one escapes the Crimson Ghost. Yeah, man, it's crazy. Like, I just, I want to go out. I'm a gig worker. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, like everyone out there um, who can't go out. Um, yeah. You know, Eric Blair says it's cool to hear a non-American perspective on it right now. It is because I feel like American, German or not, we're all in the same boat, man. Like, you can't come over here. I can't come over there. You can't play music here. You can't play music there. We're all enduring the same thing. And that's what this is. It's, it's very, very easy to look at this on a micro level. When you're in your house seven days a week, that is your world. So what you see to the left out this window and over here, it's easy to get lost in that whole illusion of this is all there is. So you kind of start like, oh, I'm going to go out here and do what I want. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. but everyone does that and everyone starts expanding their boundaries um, in the midst of stuff like this. You know, this is a global thing. There's nowhere for it to go and ebb for a while before it comes back. It's just, it's all packed, condensed in right now. There's nowhere for this to go and nowhere for us to go. Um, and economy wise, like I, said, I feel for everyone that's in this situation, especially um, you know, the people who uh, like, like small food places, restaurants, um, salons, again, my own industry of tattooing, my friends, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, but I'm just not sure that jumping the gun on this is, is the answer. It doesn't, doesn't mean I don't understand. It just means that there has to be another way. And I just feel like Things are getting reactionary. Do you know what I mean? People are getting cooped up. Things are getting kind of like cabin feverish. And um, people are sick of shit, man. They just want to go out. Yeah, but... that's true. The, the thing is uh, with the small shops now reopening over here, um, they are happy so they can make money again, mm -hmm. or at least a bit money because uh, we got a lot of restrictions here. Um, right. There's only a number of people allowed in the shops and all that stuff. Uh, the thing is, if it's getting worse again, they will be closed down again. And next time, I guess, it will be closed down for a longer period. Because cool. he, I think then government will see, okay, we have to take the shit serious now. We will do a complete lockdown like they did in India. Something like that. And this will kill a lot of shops and uh, businesses. Right. And I'm not a political person, man. You know, I, I, I believe in, you know, like, uh, you know, I'm more of, if anything, man, uh, you know, like a, like a Luciferian man, you know what I mean? And that's not even a political thing. I just, I look at it like, do, you know, like whatever, you, you know, you will like whatever's important to you, whatever matters to you, uh, but in a respectful way, do you know what I mean? Like, that's the whole of the law, that whole thing, like Thelema uh, getting into Aleister Crowley. And I'm not saying I'm into all of that. I mean, I study it and I'm interested in it, but I, I'm not going to be like, I'm a Thelemite. Um, but that's the way I see things is, is that like, we're all one big consciousness. We all have like a certain, you know, uh, uh, responsibility to one another, but there's also a responsibility to yourself as an individual. Um, but like what I've observed, when I say, when I preface this, when I'm saying I'm not political, what I've observed is we're on like a, 
like like like, a, like we're begging for martial law that's the problem it's like you yeah. don't want that man you know like it's kind of like I, I use this analogy where you have the right lane and you're driving and then it's about to end and there's a sign for four miles saying the right lane's going to end get over a lot of people get over right and they get over those are the people who put the shopping carts away they get over they understand that like for the greater of everyone getting through this, it'll take a little while, but if we get over now, it'll be a much seamless, more seamless process. But then you have the cars that get over to the very last minute and they wait and they cut you off. And all this, this self-serving attitude, what happens after that? They put a cop on the post to guide the traffic. And also, oh, we're getting sure. over, right? Like, I don't wanna deal with that. <laughs> so just get over. I, I I just see a very rough wake up mm -hmm. call for those people yeah. who are acting like this. So at at this point, everybody is happy that we can go out again and that we will meet family and friends and that we can have barbecue and all that stuff. But Ugh. we we are not really uh, safe now. And that's what people forget. Yeah, I just don't know. I'm not willing to just say yay or nay either way. Like I, the jury's out, man. I need some proof. I need some sign. I need some. You know, it's too soon. There's not been a like, here's a list of what is happening. And this is, you know, like, I'm just kind of like, eh, let's <laughs> yeah. go to the beach. I'm away here because I got a tour. I want to really, really go on next year. <laughs> it's coming up here, so. uh, but yeah. no, I feel you, man. Um, speaking of barbecue, dude, I had the best barbecue planned for you when you were over here, too. All you guys. I know. Speaking of rubbing salt and wounds, huh? I know, man. Rubbing salt and barbecue, man. I'm gonna rub some like some <laughs> rain seasoning into some uh, some shake. But uh, that's well, next time, man. I promise you. For all you guys out there, I was uh, before goes or you know the crimson ghosts were on their way. We were just literally having conversations about food. I was like, oh, there's a place down the road from my house called the Smokehouse. It's been voted best barbecue in all of Connecticut for the past six years. I can't wait to take you. And, like, yeah. I I remember I was thinking, at one point I was really thinking, okay, how can I survive that tour? How can I go on stage at all after so much food? Well. Yeah. You got to want to do it. Yeah. Yeah, Germany is opened up. I just uh, yeah. answering the question. Germany is open up, or at least partially open up. Um, people, most people are... Yeah, behaving and staying home, but um, there are lots of people still like here on River Rhine and uh, having barbecues and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. they are just not thinking. They are just uh, doing whatever they want. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, again, I'm all for personal freedom. I'm all for like you should like 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 Henry David Thoreau. Go read Walden. Go read all the civil like civil disobedience. If you haven't read Civil Disobedience or Walden by Henry David Thoreau, there you go. Walt, you know, um, you know, Ralph Waldo Emerson, you know, all that stuff, man. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm not saying like I ascribe wholly to those doctrines, but, you know, I'm kind of in that realm of like just, you know, I don't have a party. I'm not political. I don't like I think personally, you know, like the whole administration, the Trump thing is just a fucking joke, man. It's like this is insane. This is not leadership, man. It's just. So go out, have barbecues, go out, you know, live life, man. Listen to the birds, but like, keep your head on a swivel. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. don't just like stand there. Like, this is my world and you're living in it. Like, yeah, you kind of, it's chess right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody's selfish. I, I mean, where's all the toilet paper gun? I don't get it. Really, I have no idea where all this stuff should have could have could have gone now. I mean, there must be some some skyscraper somewhere with no people <laughs> in it, but instead there is toilet paper in it. It's like Land of the Dead. You know what I mean? Where they're all in the skyscraper at the end. Yeah, yeah. like all the zombies are like. Oh, we yeah, have to share. we have to share. <laughs> and I really don't get it. How how did people get the idea of? being safe when having toilet paper i mean why yeah it's just like it's just like oh whew, thank god it's just like oh, sweet. <laughs> and if you're from the poor appalachian reason regions there you go the sears catalog <laughs> you know what i mean where's the toilet paper in your house oh it's the sears catalog <laughs>
Someone said they were looking forward to the Blitzkid reunion. I agree. I was looking forward to the Blitzkid Everybody reunion does. as well. We have impeccable timing. So, no tortillas. Morgana Gasly has no tortillas. See, like, that's just wrong. When you're out of tortillas, like, sometimes all you need is just a, a bowl of tortilla chips. The thing is, without the tortillas, you don't need so much toilet paper. So, maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So as everyone, I just want to clear up uh, because I think some people are asking me this uh, personally. I don't think anyone's brought it up yet here. Um, but people want to know if you guys. So we're rescheduled for now based upon the state of the world um, for a fall tour for Blitzkid, which will end with the Triox and shows in New Jersey, the memorial show. Uh, you guys will not be on those, unfortunately, correct? Because you have prior engagements for the fall. Yep. Okay. That's true. It's it's literally like, I think Sean asked me two weeks or one week, one week, two weeks um, after we were confirmed for the show with the Bloodsucking Zombies in Vienna. Yeah. It's just a comedy of errors right now, man. Do you know what I mean? It's literally one, like a day late dollar short situation. So, but we are coming to Washington. Yes, we're playing, um, I don't know the name of the club. It's on acwnprod.com shows, but we are playing Washington State and DC, the pie shop, which is another great place goes there. They have pies. It's a punk rock place that has pies. My banjo is out of service right now. I'm sorry. I have to get it. Um, refix the bridge is screwy <clears throat> but speaking of that I'm going to play you guys a song um, at some point I'll wait until like we let Gozer go to bed before I start you know serenading a bunch of ballads to you because <clears throat> I know it's getting late over there um, well yeah. that's that's probably the thing I, I just wanted to say that um, I am pretty much have to leave now but okay. I want to add to this uh, thing here from the random asshole should play with the guys in Colorado because that's the one I'm going to. Okay, we will at one point, hopefully. Yeah, you will be over here. I I will see to it. And you know what? We're just gonna I, we're gonna buy all kinds of toilet paper and just hand it out to people. <laughs> we're just gonna hand out toilet paper from your friends in the Crimson Ghost and Blitz Kid. I, I I will bring a, a a complete suitcase full of uh, German toilet paper, special German toilet paper. We're just going to wrap you up like the Michelin man in toilet paper and just like you up there yeah. play like that. So, yeah. well, Sounds listen, man, tell everybody um, where they can go buy your merchandise because I know you guys are having some sales right now and also your music. Uh, yeah, you um, probably will not get any merchandise from us as of now, but I think we will reopen the shop next week. Uh, you can find us on the Big Cartel. But... Um, I think the gateway to everything relating to the Crimson Ghosts for social media, for uh, Spotify and everything, just visit uh, www.crimson-ghost.de and then you find all the links that lead to everything from the web shop that will open up next week again, um, Spotify, Bandcamp, our Facebook, Instagram, yeah, everything. Awesome, man. Good deal. Well, give my love to all the other dudes, all the other ghosts. I will. I will. Thank you for having me here. Always a pleasure seeing you, man. I miss you, buddy. Ich vermisse dich. Ich vermisse dich auch. Ah. <laughs> Und uh, wenn du gehst schlafen? Trump ich von geh. mir. Trump von mir. Oh, ich werde von dir träumen, bestimmt. <laughs> uh, du, singst in mein, du singst zu mein Herz in jeder Sprache. Oh. I don't even know what that means. I'm just making shit up. So. <laughs> anyway, man. <laughs> thank you so much, man. Um, take care of yourself. All right, thank you. And I'll see you soon. All right. Have a nice evening. Bye. Cheers, buddy. Bye. Mr. Andreas Jackal, the gozer. All right. Now, listen, um, I'm going to play you guys one more song, okay? Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about movies. And then uh, we'll let you guys get on with your night. <clears throat> so today marks a very well, yesterday, technically, um, very special anniversary um, for someone, okay? Very special by the name of Annie, all right? 
Who was Annie, you ask? I don't know. All I know is that there is a song written about Annie, an old, old Appalachian murder ballad <clears throat> that I heard when I was young. For everyone who wants to know, my, my dad's in a bluegrass band, plays banjo. I've grown up with bluegrass, all right? One thing unique to Appalachia is, besides the Melungeons, go check it out, um, is uh, murder ballads. <clears throat> now, you may be familiar with the term murder ballads just through uh, Nick Cave. Um, he kind of brought it to prominence uh, with the album Murder Ballads, aptly titled back in 1997. Um, there's many of them, okay? And, you know, there's a rich oral tradition in eastern Kentucky, southwestern Virginia, West Virginia, okay? Which is how all this music came about. Um, there's stories, you know what I mean? And that's kind of what influenced me to write music was these story aspects. And I hear it, like, like someone mentioned Washer of the Ford, that's my attempt at a murder ballad through language, uh, like the dialect I chose, um, and even the structure. <clears throat> but the one that's always stood out to me, that's always been really important to me is a song uh, called Willie Moore. Uh, Willie Moore is an old, old murder ballad, okay? Um, circulating through the hills of Kentucky and all that fun stuff. Um, and it tells the story of um, a girl named Annie. And um, I've always loved this song. And I've always, always wanted to do something with it. And a few years ago, a fellow by the name of Greg Graffin, a.k.a. the singer from Bad Religion, ironically enough, put out a gospel slash bluegrass album. I use those terms interchangeably because a lot of bluegrass acknowledges deism and things like that, which is kind of ironic for Greg Graffin, but um, hats off to him. I love Bad Religion. I love Greg, love Greg Graffin, um, but he did a cover of this song and I was like, yes. So the album is called um, Cold as the Clay. If you guys haven't, if you're Bad Religion fans, go listen to his albums. He has two solo albums. One is called American Lesion, L-E-S-I-O-N. And then the other is Cold as the Clay. And Cold as the Clay is more, um, you're going to get your fill of um, banjos and, um, you know, fiddles and things like that. But the version that I'm doing um, kind of goes back to the Kasoy sisters with Eric Darling. Um, and I'm going to play it for you. Now, I've got it right there. I tried to have it ready for today, but I'm having some structural difficulties with this thing. All right. So I'm going to have to play it for you on guitar. And one thing I just kind of want to point out before I get started is, as with a lot of murder ballads, there's not a lot of change in this. You're going to hear just like the same thing repeated over and over, the same passage, the same bars, the same um, meter. Okay. And that's largely because it's just an easy way to remember, you know, to tell a story. And that's, the key point to this, as with all murder ballads. Uh, but I said anniversary, and the reason why is uh, there's a line in this, and I don't want to give away too much before I play. Um, three albums, I haven't heard it, the third, but um, it says it was about the 10th of May, a time that I remember well. Now, um, every 10th of May, every year, I always play it, you know, on whatever, either banjo or... Um, Spotify. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to play this for you. Okay. And uh, this is yeah, Greg Graffin works at I think UCLA. Um, he is in uh, let's say anthropology. I don't know. Anyway. I think it's tuned up here. All right, so Willie Moore. Are you guys cool with Willie Moore? Can I get an amen? All right, amen? Amen. Can I get an amen? Don't ask why the preacher man got to have a nice car. Ah, why the preacher man got to have a nice house. Ah, just give. I said, give. I said, give me an amen. Thank you. All right. Willie 
Yet more was the king his age 21. He courted a damsel fair. All her eyes were as bright as the diamonds after night, and wavy black was her hair. He courted her both night and day, till marriage they did agree. But when it came to get her parents' consent, they said it could never be. She threw herself in Willie Moore's arms, as oftentimes had done before. But little did he think when they parted that night, sweet Annie, he would see no more. Oh, it was about the 10th of May, a time I remember well. That very same night, Annie's body disappeared in a way that no tongue could tell. Sweet Annie was loved both far and near, had friends living all around. And in a little brook beside cottage door, the body of sweet Ann was drowned. She was taken by her weeping friends and carried to her parents' room. And there she was dressed in a gown snowy white and laid in a lonely tomb. Her parents are now have been left alone, one morn and the other weeps. And beneath the ground beside cottage door, the body of sweet Annie sleeps. Last verse. Willie Moore scarcely spoke to his friends, they say. From that moment they both did part. His last days were spent by his true lover's grave. Well, he died of a broken heart. Yeah, he died of a broken heart. He died of a broken heart. Hail Satan. There you go. That's straight out of the Argyle Goolsby murder ballad, Hallelujah Songbook. Willie Moore. All right, guys. I see a Davy Calabrese too. So nice to see you, Mr. Calabrese. All right, listen, you guys, uh, we're going to move on here. I don't want to bore you. I'm sorry. Um, but Movie Club. Last week, if you were here, we had uh, Paul Acker with us, my buddy Paul tattoo extraordinaire um and we let him pick the movie and the movie was anybody did you guys watch it body bags i will tell you the story of cedar bluff in a moment um body bags so body bags uh john carpenter and uh i gotta say i i had not seen it so uh i was really like kind of where how did i miss this awesome stuff man i was surprised to see mark hamill who fucking knew right <laughs> like that was amazing um yeah so thank you very much paul for that i love anthology movies um you know like creep show and you know, tells from the dark side and all that stuff so uh you know it's good to see stuff like that i i really want to see something like that again um i have my ideas for some stuff that i want to do we'll see what happens but uh yeah the eye man like uh Mark Hamill is everywhere. Mark Hamill is actually going to be on the Nosferatu uh, DVD that I'm putting out. All oh, the cameras up here for keep forgetting. Hello. Um, yeah, he's going to be doing an intro. We contacted him and he agreed to do an intro talking about Nosferatu, uh, the film. And um, so when this comes out, uh, when I can get back to the studio and finish it and put it out, when you get your copy and you pop it in your DVD player, he's going to be the first person you hear. So. Uh, yeah, Creep Show, the new TV show. I, I got to see that. I have not seen it. I've been kind of in the lab lately. So, but yeah, no, I was really, I was down with that, man. Um, that was my favorite one was the Mark Hamill one. <laughs> I won my cake. So I want to thank Paul for uh, giving us that one out there 
Which one was your guys' favorite out of the stories? Hair. <laughs> Hair was the you know, alien. Oh my god! Like, yeah, Paul knows his shit, man. You know, he's not just another pretty face. He knows how to tattoo and uh, sling out some good um, deep cuts when it comes to movies. So, uh, yes, the Michael Graves puppet show. That is a thing I'm going to be playing in. So um, more updates on that. Maybe we'll get Michael on here and we can talk about that sometime soon. If you're just coming on, we were. Uh, I was on Michael's Instagram back uh, a couple nights ago. And I've been commissioned to play uh, one of the lead roles in his uh, Puppet Afterlife movie. So it's going to be me and a bunch of uh, blur, blur, blur puppets. So Speaking of puppets, when I was a kid, Sesame Street, holy shit, those aliens used to scare me. I don't know about anybody else. You know what I'm talking about? They would do this number. They would always come to the window. And this is why they scared me, because they were like, you didn't see them. You just saw the moon outside. And there you go. Yep, 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 yep. No, 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 no. Yep, yep, yep. That shit scared me. All right, it's like a five-year-old Argyle Goolsby. I wasn't having it. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Return of the Living documentary, it, it is going to happen. And it's just two, that's like five episodes worth of talking about stuff right there. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but yes, it is going to happen. Um, projected next year. I know, right? Like eight years later, but I promise. Someone wanted to know about, um, I'm going to jump in here real quick, uh, Cedar Bluff. Cedar Bluff is a song that, um, it's old, old Blitzkid song. I mean, I'm talking like 98 early, early, early Blitzkid song that we just kind of put uh, on the back burner once we started writing stuff for like Let Flowers Die when we were like, oh, let's do pianos and, and branch out. It felt a little too... Um, uh, like on the nose. So we just kind of let it go for a while. And um, when we were looking at, you know, uh, songs to put on Apparitional, we were like, oh my God, this song's awesome. Like we should do it. So we put it back on, um, the, you know, the repertoire. But it's a true story. Uh, there's a town called Cedar Bluff in Virginia, not far from where we were. Um, and uh, there was a house up there called the Happy Birthday House. And um, the story goes is that back in the 50s, um, a girl had more or less, I mean, she was unstable. She was young, <clears throat> but you know, it's the fifties. So unless someone just shipped you off to a sanitarium, then, you know, you either lived in the basement in the attic or your family just ignored what was happening to you. Um, so I think the family probably chose the latter unwisely and uh, it resulted in um, their uh, murder. And this is true. I mean, you know, like uh, my friend, he's not on here, of course, because his, his name is Johnny Asshole. So he has to do what an asshole does and not tune in. Um, his dad worked for, um, you know, the, the sheriff's office. And um, there's record of this actually happening. So this was a true murder in the area. Um, but this part may be um, questionable. But, you know, it may be true. I mean, we've gone this far, it being true. Um, but when she had killed her family, she wrote happy birthday to me on her, on the mantle place. And the, the impetus behind the murder was they had forgotten her birthday. Um, so yeah, someone saying apparitional, no, apparitional was actually on the front page of MySpace when it came out. We were like, for whatever reason, MySpace was like, we were the, the, the fucking, you know, thing of the day. Like, check this band out. Weird. Um, but yeah, so, um, I, I had only been up there once, but, uh, TB went to school, like college up around that area. And, you know, they would kind of like tool over there and mess around and he had some crazy stories. So we'll have him on here to talk about that at some point. So, yeah, no shortage of ghost stories. So, um, but anyway, listen, uh, while I'm thinking about it, because I know we're kind of getting down to the last, um, quarter of the hour here. And um, movie next week. So I had said to my Brazilian friends on here, I don't know if we still have Brazil in the house or not. Um, but what I'd like you guys to check out next week is a movie by Coffin Joe. Um, and the movie is called At Midnight, I'll Take Your Soul. I got to say it like this, At Midnight, I'll Take Your Soul. Uh, 1964, I believe it was. It's the first, I mean, it 
the first Brazilian horror movie. It was like their uh, submission into that ring and that arena. And um, my friend James Fort had introduced me to this movie way back in like maybe 2001. He dubbed me a copy of it and sent it to me. And it's, I don't say it's really good, obviously, but um, for me personally, I base my overall um, love for what makes a good horror movie on the atmosphere. Personal preference, the heart wants what it wants. That's what I want, good atmosphere. And this movie is so good, you guys. I'm gonna read from you um, the IMDB, okay? Synopsis. At Midnight, I'll Take Your Soul features an appearance of Coffin Joe, Jose Mahica Marins, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, a wicked undertaker whose wife cannot bear children. Uh, Joe conspires to impregnate Terezina in her stead. I like that, in her stead. When several people in a small town are found murdered, Dr. Rodolfo suspects Joe's involvement. A gypsy warns Joe of incoming tragedy, but he dismisses her as a fraud only to discover that revenge may live beyond the grave. Um, the special effects in this movie, like there are some very, very interesting things. I, there's one scene and I don't want to give too much away, but at the very end, um, you'll notice, you'll see a procession of some ghosts. They actually glued glitter onto the film, which it's kind of like hokey now, but like there's like a quality to it, man. Like there's just, it's saturated with really good atmosphere. Tarantulas, he's killing people. With, like, I don't want to give it away, but at midnight, I'll take your soul. I do believe that it is on, um, I don't know if it's on Amazon Prime. Um, I'm fairly certain that you can watch it on um, YouTube, perhaps. And then I'll tell you guys all about... Um, you know, my meeting of Coffin Joe, which I've mentioned before, and I'll, I'll elaborate on that a little bit, but I got to know him somewhat, fortunately, in, in the last years of his life. Um, I'd met him on Blitz Kids' last tour when we were in South, or last tour of South America. Um, you know, and I just stayed in contact with him and um, his daughter, um, and she really facilitated him doing the intro for my last album, um, Darken Your Doorstep. And that's, if you've not heard it, that's Coffin Joe at the very beginning. So, yeah. Bobby Gutsbane, don't be giving too much away, man, but I agree. I agree, it's pretty cool. Um, the Yeah, it's just very, very cool, man. Like, he, he's just one of those guys where you just, he plays the villain so well, you know? Uh, and his fingernails are real. I'm just gonna throw that out there. They were real when I saw him. And what that means is, like, if I taped this, big pin on my thumb that's about how long his thumbnail is imagine a frito curling around about four times and that was his uh his appendages saturnalia of the accursed there is some stuff planned for that so how did i get the wood smell on the record uh lady never reveals her secrets so um yeah at midnight i'll take your soul and there's a there's a bunch more after that he had one called at I forgot at something I'll I'll take your corpse or something like that um but like I'm not really a fan of uh that era of movies in general um in terms of horror not really in like the 70s uh 60s 70s I, when I say I'm not into it I don't mean like eh. like I just again I'm 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 shadows and mist you know and uh, a lot of stuff kind of geared towards Technicolor and the go-go era. Like, and I like it. That's the Rob Zombie thing, you know? Um, so I kind of got lost on Coffin Joe stuff after that, so. Scratch and sniff labels, yeah. That was a thing um, on Dark in Your Doorstep. So it smelled like dead wood. Not Edwood, dead wood. All right, you guys. Um, I feel like we're, uh, we're, 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 I'm, I'm expending all of your resources here tonight. So at 10 a.m. I'll take you to breakfast. Yeah. 
After what he puts most of those people through in that movie, that's the least he could do. Dog Soldiers, man, okay. I was trying to remember if I actually brought Dog Soldiers up or not, and I'm glad that Mr. Sardinicus um, cued me in on that. Um, we'll talk about that. Don't watch it yet. That was going to be this week's uh, movie, but uh, we're not going to we're not going to do that yet. We're going to watch At Midnight. I'll take your soul, and then we'll do Dog Soldiers, which is arguably one of the best werewolf movies in the past like 20 years. So, I like Mario Bava's stuff. I do. Um, like Black, you know, uh, uh, the, with um, the Vertilac, Boris Karloff. That stuff's good. That's different. Like, again, I like it. It's just, again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being picky. So, um, but yeah, those are good. Uh, when I get a venue. Yeah, all the tickets are honored. If you have tickets for our tour, they're honored uh, for the upcoming tour. And if for some reason things have to get pushed back, those will be honored again. So we will be out there, don't worry. Uh, yes, for a lot of people out there, Matt Bruzio, that you bring up a good point. Um, I had the uh, honor of being in a uh, trauma film, which I think is set to come out soon, Shakespeare's Shitstorm. Uh, my buddies in the big bad, uh, they were the house band um, in the movie and their bass player couldn't make it. And this was filmed down in uh, Brooklyn. So, well, I think it was Brooklyn, right, Matt? I can't remember. Uh, but I was asked to come stand in and um, I'm still um, cleaning out um, green, um, <laughs> like flour and gunk out of my, my base to this day. Just watch the movie, you'll see. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, Badman's cool. So. Oh, hey, I want to say something, too. I want to, I want to, you know, you know, when the newspaper make their corrections last year, I think I made some people uh, or last week, I made some people angry, uh, not angry, but, you know, um, I had mentioned there's a show on um, Amazon Prime called Ronald, wait, wait for it, Dolls, Tales from the Unexpected, of the Unexpected. Um, and I was like, oh, Ronald Dawes is an author. You know, obviously Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, James the Giant Peach, Fantastic Mr. Fox. But uh, for me as a kid, it was like uh, the Twits and George, George's Marvelous Medicine. And I kept seeing people going, roll doll, roll doll. And I was like, why are they spelling Ronald wrong? <laughs> so this is just goes to show you how you can look at a word your entire life and not see the letter uh, or see the letter in where it doesn't exist. So I apologize to all the roll doll fans out there. I, in my... 465 years on this earth never once realized there was not an N in his name. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, the Tempest, right? Exactly. It's a very unique take on that. Um, yeah, so Shakespeare shitstorm. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, barfing up some uh, green. Uh, looks like, uh, I don't know, what was that stuff? <laughs> I don't know what it was. I have no idea. I just know it's still, I had to take my pickups out of my base three times to get it out. <laughs> the twits were great, man. Oh my God. They were such dicks. <laughs> All right, you guys, we're coming down to the last uh, few minutes here. So I want to thank Andreas for coming on here, uh, for talking with us and hopefully you guys had a good time. We're on seven weeks now. Can't believe it. Uh, so hopefully you're not tired of seeing my stupid face. Um, if you were here last week, I wanted to let you know that um, if you missed last week, I own five t-shirts. I'm not joking. So um, we're cycling back through them. All right. So I, I just get used to it. Watch out for snakes. Dude, I know that's, uh, oh God, Ega, right? Yeah, Ega. That was on Mystery Science Theater. Watch out for snakes. Oh, Eric. The things you say. I bet you say that's all the girls. All right, Rope Grimm. See you later. Check out uh, At Midnight, I'll Take Your Soul. George's Marvelous Medicine was badass. I still have a copy of that book, man. I loved his artwork. You know, it was just so, uh, uh, like, just loose, but uh, like just crazy. I loved it. Trying to feed cherries? All right, let's try again. You ready? Someone's two-year-old is trying to feed me cherries. Tell me when you're ready. 
are they pitted cherries? Do I, to, I, I need to spit the pit out, or are you guys trying to kill me with cyanide? All right, here, here we go. You ready? Here we go. You ready? Hey, I'm R.R. R. Goolsby. You know what I really need in my life right now? A cherry. <sighs> What's that you say? There's one for me? All right, here we go. Ah! Oh, my God. That's so good. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. All right. There we go. Benny is playing drums on the next tour, yes. I'm going to stay here as long as you guys keep asking questions until I got five minutes. Facebook's going to cut me off or Instagram, the internet. Uh, Iga. I think it was subtitled something, The Man From Somewhere. Right? What was it? Good. Me too. I'm happy. I like cherries. So. <laughs> Oh, God. Crickets. Yep. Yep. Chris is playing a couple shows. He'll be at the Tennessee show, Johnson City. He'll be playing um, Morgantown. And um, he'll be playing uh, Newport. So, Emilio, yeah. Uh, Hack Sand Bases, I will have some more available soon. And some of these, if you guys are on the sixth string end of things <clears throat> interested in melungeon history it's cool man i didn't know anything about it until i found out that i was part of that which i found out a long time ago but 23 and me confirmed it they don't have a melungeon category but you know when you're you know 0.3 percent um like african-american and 0.2 percent portuguese and 0.1 percent um you know, Native American things <laughs> that you're like, eh, I think it's, it's probably true. I guess I'm a Melungeon. My favorite mystery science uh, theater 3000, Trumpy. Oh, the potatoes. Sweet little potato. Ew, this potato has claws. Ew, winged potatoes. That's a good one. The Blitzkin logo cake. Oh my God, yes, I do remember that. Dude, thank you so much. That was awesome. It had the, the, the thing on top of the cake, it, right? It sat in the cake. Uh, more ghost stories. Yeah, I mean, we can do more of those. Again, um, I don't think I, I can't do anything, you know, like in ghost story-wise in two minutes, so. <laughs> uh, pictures of Lake Shawnee Amusement Park. Yeah, we were talking about that last week. If you guys weren't here last week, uh, speaking of ghost stories, what you can do, what I can offer you in these uh, last few moments is go check out Lake Shawnee, S-H-A-W-N-E-E, -E, Punk Rock Princess 1031 had mentioned it here, um, in Spanishburg, Virginia. Really, really cool. That's by where I lived, just flanked with all this crazy stuff. So, um, no, like, I, I, I need to get to Shutter. Like, I'm just one of those people where, like, I'm just trying to plow my way through all the stuff I want to watch on Hulu first and Amazon Prime and write songs at the same time so <laughs> it was it was awesome it was very good thank you so much all right you guys listen uh episode seven we're wrapping up here again a minute 51 thank you so much for sticking with us this long i hope you guys had a good time uh we'll come on next week i may start um doing guests every other week so we can start kind of like focusing a little more on movies uh you know we'll talk about that and see if that's what you guys want i know these are kind of turning into two hour forays you guys are champs sitting here this whole time. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, in the meantime, just stay safe, put your shopping carts away. Um, you know, practice your social distancing, all that fun stuff. And, uh, yeah, we'll be out there sometime sooner than later till then you'll just be seeing me here. All right. So thank you very much. Long live the horror. Have a good night. Love all you kind people. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.